Good morning, OwnRev family, and thanks for joining us for the Monday Morning Devotion, brought to you by Own Your Health Revolution. I'm Dr. Holland Meyer, along with my co-host, Gloria Strait, and she'll be closing us out in prayer today. We do this every Monday morning at 713 Central Standard Time. It's about a 10 to 20 minute devotional to start your week off with Jesus. And remember, how you start your day is how you rule your day. As we start our day, we're going to dig up the guilt and the shame that most of us push down and bury. So anything from failed marriage and divorce to health or maybe a diagnosis, weight gain or an eating disorder, moving on uh, from the death of the loved one, going on with life after tragedy, even a failed business or career, and from all that I've ever heard, all things associated with being a parent, and when we feel like we don't live up to other people's expectations or even friendships that have gone bad, and the passage we're going to start off with comes from Luke 8, 43 through 48, and I'm reading from the message. So it starts out as, in the crowd that day, there was a woman who for 12 years had been afflicted with hemorrhages and bleeding. She had spent every penny she had on doctors, but not one had been able to help her. So I'm going to cut in this message right here. And and can you imagine going to every doctor only to be told that they don't know how to help you? I bet she felt discarded, even lost hope, thinking that there was no future for her, believing the devil's lies that she was broken. And if you can imagine the guilt and the shame that she must have felt, but it goes on to say that she slipped in from behind and touched the edge of Jesus's robe. So I'm cutting in here again. And did you get that she slipped in from behind? She must have had to fight her way through the crowd, then strategically approach him from behind. And I wonder why she didn't go in front. Do you think she may have felt shame, embarrassed of her condition? But even if she had to approach him from behind, she still had hope and trust and the faithfulness to get as close as possible for complete healing for her condition. So um, so re- repeating that verse, she slipped in from behind and touched the edge of Jesus' robe. At that very moment, her hemorrhaging and bleeding stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? When no one stepped forward, Peter said, but master, we've got crowds of people on our hands. Dozens have touched you. Jesus insisted, someone touched me. I felt power discharging from me. And right then, I think it's amazing that the Bible noted that even though in a large crowd with dozens of people touching Jesus, that he noticed when this woman touched him with such a hope, such a passion and purpose and faith for healing. In verse 47, it goes on to say, when the woman realized that she couldn't remain hidden, she knelt trembling before him. In front of all the people, she blurted out her story, why she touched him and how at that same moment that she was healed. Oh my goodness gracious, my heart goes out to this woman. Can you imagine speaking in front of a huge crowd? That's hard enough, but then to be 100% and completely vulnerable and truthful about the thing that you kept hidden in your heart to voice the unspeakable that you keep hidden away. And then in verse 48, the final verse, uh, Jesus says, Daughter, you took a risk trusting me, and now you're healed and whole. Live well and live blessed. And we discover here that the risk in trusting Jesus, Jesus does pay off, always for God's glory and to showcase his grace. It might not always look like what we want it to, though. And so as we get started in in not just dissecting this passage, but relating it back to our own lives in this day and age, going back in the passage to where the woman approached from the back, trying to go unnoticed, when we experience shame and guilt or, or, or experiencing them independently, we tend to hide it. We tend to suffer alone and allow it to have a stronghold in our lives, many times like an anchor that holds us back or chains that entangle us and keep us tripped up. It often seems that nobody else would understand and we become certain that they would judge us. Sometimes it just simply seems easier to take it on by ourselves. And most often our instinct is to hide it or stuff it down deep and 
deal with it on our own that that can often be driven by some kind of pride. And when pride gets a hold of us, it can have an immense power over us. Even when we feel like we pulled ourselves together and we think we're okay. In some cases, just feeling okay with getting over tragedy can pile on the shame and the guilt all over again like a vicious cycle. Even when we feel okay, guilt and shame can poke holes in our spirit and seemingly in our heart and break us down. Sometimes it feels like it breaks us back to square one. And it reminds me, if you can bear with me on this analogy, it reminds me of when I used to play on the monkey bars when I was little. I would see how many I can skip without falling down into the lava pit, which was the ground below. And I remember I skipped three or four bars with my right hand, but I would not let go of the original bar that my left hand was holding on to because I wasn't sure I could avoid falling off into the lava pit. As this relates to grace and shame, it's oftentimes like I'm trying so desperately to reach and take hold of God's forgiveness and his grace, but not quite letting go of the past and letting go of the shame that I harbor. I've read so many devotions about letting go of shame and guilt and moving on and moving forward, and it makes complete sense. Until I'm in the situation sometimes, especially with the loss of a loved one or a health condition or diagnosis, but as I lose the shame and I move forward, then the guilt sets in moving forward and the devil's lies get louder about guilt and forgetting and the negative self-talk weighs heavy. And so many different circumstances can be tied into this, especially with the negative self-talk weighing heavy on your spirit. And I want to shed light. I want to shed it. Actually, I want to shed a spotlight on you today. And I want to light up the grace that is right in front of you right now. Because we, we will all fall short of perfection. And that's noted in Romans 3.23. So give yourself a break and latch on to God's grace that far exceeds our understanding. I want to encourage you to let go of the past guilt and the past shame. Because you can actually let go of the past guilt and past shame without letting go of the past experience. And you can still do that without losing sight of the beautiful memory or the sweet soul you can lose the negative self-talk of the shoulda, woulda, coulda. Stop beating yourself up over and over for years and years. It is not necessary to get stuck in a holding pattern because when we're stuck in a deep rut for a long time, we are robbing ourselves of God's blessings because we can't see any higher than the rut that we're in. Like the woman in the Bible passage, she latched onto Jesus' robe just trying to touch anything that belonged to Jesus the great healer. She fought through the crowd to get close enough for complete healing. She trusted. She had hope. She let go of all the doctors that told her that nothing could be done. She let go of the past and latched on to a new possibility and a new hope in Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you to let go of a few specific things and take hold of God's grace. Visualize being on those monkey bars in real life and letting go of the past guilt and the past shame that keeps you in the rut. Latch on to God's forgiveness and God's promises and remember to hold on tight and cling to God's mercy and grace so you don't fall into the lava pit. He will wash your sins away and wipe your slate as white as snow. So here's what I want to challenge you to release and what to hold on to. If one of these resonate with you, I literally want you to write it on a sticky note and put it on your computer or put it on your mirror or um, in your car on the dashboard so you can be reminded. So here's what I want to challenge you to release and what to hold on to. Let go of the shame-filled daydreaming and hold on to the grace-filled forgiveness. Let go of insecurity and take hold of who you are in Christ. Let go of bitterness and take hold of radical forgiveness. If one of those resonated with you today, I want you to write it down. So I'll just repeat it. Let go of the shame-filled daydreaming or guilt-filled daydreaming. Fill in whatever emotion that pulls you down and take hold of grace-filled forgiveness. Let go of insecurity and take hold of who you are in Christ. Let go of bitterness and take hold of radical forgiveness. So if you start with those three things or at least one of those things, 
I'm not challenging you to let go of the experience, but I am challenging you to let go of the emotions that tear you down and rob you of God's blessings over your life and the light that you might be to others. The next time you think of the scenario that brings you guilt and shame, whether it's your health, relationships, tragedy, a career, I want you to focus on God's grace and his forgiveness and who you are in Christ. Don't let the devil continue to rehash and highlight what God has already forgiven and cleansed. Jesus' death on the cross was enough. And in closing, I want to leave you with these final words of encouragement before uh, Gloria closes us out in prayer. Jesus can make your shame and your guilt a showcase for his grace and forgiveness. So thanks for uh, letting me share that with you. Glow, if you can close us out in prayer, we'd appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. And thank you for that awesome word. And, I mean, it's that's a really, really important um, thing to do, learn to do, which is let go in order to, to really let God work in your life in all areas. And thank you for the challenge. And it's my challenge accepted. That last one, I'm still, <laughs> that bitterness, ooh, that's a kicker right there. But um, let me close this out. Lord God, first of all, thank you for um, just sending your son Jesus here on earth to um, share his love, share his compassion, share his salvation, bringing the gifts of salvation to us all. And we just appreciate you and thank you for you being who you are, God. You are God alone. And you being God alone, we know that we can't do anything if it's not uh, with you, um, through you and for you. And so we just lift up today, we lift up this morning, we lift up this week, that we will um, be able to have that hope and faith like the lady with the issue of blood, Lord, that we, even though... We we know we're in a hard place or we feel like we can't do anything. As long as we can touch the hem of, of your garment, Lord, we know everything um, is possible. As long as we can um, touch you, as long as we can feel you, as long as we know that you are here with us, which you are, um, all things will be possible. And as, um, I just pray that everybody... And, and their lives will be able to learn how to give you their situation completely and wholeheartedly. Um, once once we give it completely to you, that's whenever you're able to work completely in us. And so I just pray um, just for everybody to, to be able to do that. Also, I want to lift up um, the different families that have been affected this past weekend, um, the Jewish community, to the bomb threats, to the people who are um, walking from Guatemala, I think. Um, but just the world, Lord, just, I pray for everybody in the world, just that they'll turn to you and um, that you will comfort them, comfort their hearts, comfort their, their spirit, and just pray for this world, Lord. And we just thank you for what you have done, what you're going to do, and what you've been doing. And we just give your name all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Glow. Awesome prayer. And thanks to each of you for joining us on the calls or listening to the playback and just playing a role in the Own Your Health Revolution community. Feel free, if this is your first time joining us, uh, we have a Facebook group. It's called Own Your Health Revolution, where we focus on the mind, the body, and the spirit. Um, and so just join us. We'd love to have you. And we want to remind you that we also record these and post them on Facebook. So if this message touched you, then feel free to share it with your friend. Thanks for joining us and stay classy, folks.